give me two claps and a Ric Flair. Welcome to Three Count Commentaries. So, yes, I know this subject has come up a bunch, but I was wondering, really sitting down, considering how was I going to approach this subject. Ronda Rousey has a love-hate relationship with the fan base, and she admitted that certain things that the fans say to her, she takes personally. And that kind of speaks for itself. You know, she's always going to have this problem. And then I realized what it is, and it's it's really something I should have figured out a long time ago. Rhonda isn't a dork. She's not a nerd. She's not like a lot of these people out here. She's like Sid Vicious, the Ultimate Warrior, Brock Lesnar. She maybe grew up a little bit more of a fan than they were, but she's an athlete. You know, she's she was into mixed martial arts at a young age. She was into like judo and trying to go to the Olympics and being competitive. And her entire persona that made her famous was cultivated by the UFC. Even when um, Ronda herself was like talking in during the media for her UFC fights, she was completely unlikable because she's very cocky and it comes from succeeding early in life. You know, people have, you know, big egos and sometimes you're, there's a difference between your ego being big due to, um, just being inflated because other people are sucking up to you, which is part of the problem with Rhonda, because, you know, she's had a history of people sucking up to her, you know, the Joe Rogans and all the MMA types. Cause she was like the first female breakthrough athlete. So they were all trying to put her on a pedestal and blowing her head up and everything. That's part of the problem, but it's also a part of the problem that she is a legitimate success story. She's a legitimate winner, you know? So she had reasons to have an ego. She had a reason to have a chip on her shoulder. She got cocky because she's a winner. And we, because she was a winner, she started saying outlandish things like she could beat Floyd Mayweather in a fight. And guess what? All these other people, all the suck ups started saying, oh yeah, you definitely could beat Floyd Mayweather in a fight. And it became absolutely ridiculous. It became this Frankenstein monster of a situation where part of it is UFC pushing with their public relations, trying to make Ronda the biggest superstar in US and in, in MMA and trying to make her the face of MMA, the female face of UFC. She's a breakout star. She they're trying to put her in movies. She's, you know, Sonya Blade in the video games, Mortal Kombat and all this kind of stuff. And then WWE WWE is kind of like, well, we can take some of this and apply it to our show. But guess what? A lot of wrestling fans don't like Ronda Rousey either. Difference the MMA community, they talk shit on, on these on these message boards. If she when she started to lose, they started really kind of getting on her. But they really couldn't say too much when she was winning. The wrestling fans are mostly nerds. They don't care whether she wins or loses because they know that it's rigged, so it doesn't matter. They can now attack pretty much anything about Ronda Rousey. You know, don't like her hair color, don't like how she stands, don't like that constipated look on her face, or anything like that. But the fact of the matter is, Rhonda is having difficulties making uh, that bridging the gap between herself and the audience. And that problem is she is not what the audience wants, nor is she able to be what the audience wants. It just takes me back to the the smoking broken skull sessions with Becky Lynch when. uh. Becky Lynch, you know, was talking about Ronda Rousey, how, you know, the comp the competition between the two of them. And she felt like it was perfect because Becky was, is an everyman, you know, and, you know, using that term very generally. And that she, you saw her struggling. You saw how hard it was for her. You saw her river dancing, you know, being the lucky little leprechaun. You saw her go through the steampunk thing. You saw her try and fail and try so hard to succeed and people pushed and pushed and pushed for Becky to finally succeed in this business. And then she finally got there. When it came to Ronda Rousey, she was kind of put on that pedestal. She was put on the same level as Charlotte and Becky and all of them without putting in the effort because her independence was working in the UFC, you know? And so what ends up happening is she, Ronda is now ported into this 
rigged world where the fights are are not real. And she continues to remind people that the fights are not real, <laughs> which it isn't helping because it's, you know, she's just saying this stuff and she's getting heat for it. But it shows that Becky did not really dedicate herself to wrestling. She quit and then she came back while Rhonda was a wrestling fan who was interested in wrestling, but went in a completely different way. She went into athletics. You know, because she had that option. So she watched wrestling from the periphery and now has to get, get into the business. And now she has to deal with the egos of people who can't fucking fight. So now you're in a situation where you have to fake fight with people who can't fight. And they have big egos about not being able to fight. And they have attitudes about how you're getting paid and all this type of stuff. Remember, Sasha Banks also had words for Ronda Rousey. Oh, he, she had a big problem with how much Ronda Rousey was getting paid when Ronda wasn't working every Monday and all that kind of stuff. Again, this stuff was not covered up in any way. So now Ronda has to deal with these people, with these gigantic egos, Becky and Sasha and Charlotte and all these people who feel like Ronda is coming in and capitalizing off of all of their hard work, which is partially true. The fans don't like Ronda because she's unlikable. She's not a baby face and they know it. She's not a likable person. She is another Goldberg. She's another Brock. She's another Sid Vicious. She, she's going to learn how to wrestle enough to protect herself and maybe her opponent. But it's not something that she grew up doing. And wrestling fans are notorious dorks for stuff like that. They will support a guy who is, all, all I've ever wanted to be was a wrestler and he can't draw and he sucks in the ring. He's boring and bland with no personality whatsoever. They'll, they'll push and push and support that guy come hell or high water. Somebody who's a legitimate athlete, doesn't matter how good they actually are. If they're not a wrestling fan and haven't been a wrestling fan, can't tell you about all the intricacies of some PWG show from 15 years ago. They'll think that this guy is some kind of, you know, outsider who is invading their wrestling space. And that's kind of how Ronda Rousey came across. She comes across as an outsider who is invading the wrestling space and making fun of wrestling fans, especially when, when she starts talking about how all everything is fake and everything. So she's very unlikable. And I saw an article where Mark Henry is trying to give her advice on how to become more of a baby face. <laughs> For starting, it's not going to work. Because it's too, like, Rhonda at this point, what, she's in her mid-30s, maybe late 30s or something like that. Her personality is what it is. Anything that she does now will just be part of acting. But his advice was for her to basically utilize the fact that she now has a child to push the to push upon the audience that she's trying to reform her ways. That she's trying to become a better person. That she's trying to become a nicer person for her daughter and all that kind of stuff. Which sounds fine, I guess. It, there's nothing wrong with that advice. The problem is wrestling fans are, again, dorks and they don't care. Just like when Goldberg came back and said, oh, I want my, I want to show my son what I can do. Wrestling fans are like, I don't care about that. Boo you and your fucking kid. You know, because they're, they're dorks. And they don't appreciate you if you, can, if you can't have five-star wrestling matches. I'm sorry, wrestling matches. They want you to do a Canadian Destroyer. Go jump off a ladder, Goldberg. How dare you try to be <laughs> legitimate and have intensity in the wrestling ring? Fuck you. Go do a helo. Go springboard off something, you old fart. That's kind of how they think, you know? And it's hard to not have contempt for those kinds of people. I have contempt for them, and I'm not a fucking Olympian. I'm not a UFC fighter. They fucking suck. And those are the people she interacts with. The wrestling fans that she meets are the people who are absolutely the dregs of society. The, the wrestling journalists. The wrestling journalist class are just as bad. So it's a mixture of things. Rhonda isn't used to being nitpicked. You know, she's used to people kissing her ass. That's part of her problem. She's used to people kissing her ass. Even when she started losing, she really didn't take criticism well. And hell, the reason why she's in WWE right now is because she really couldn't take losing. Her ego couldn't take losing. And she can't take fucking criticism. If she could take criticism, she probably never would have been losing in the first place. You know? But I think people thought her superpower was, you know, 
blowing smoke up her ass. But ultimately, yeah, the reason people don't like Ronda Rousey is the reason she's not connecting with people and becoming a bigger and better baby face is because Ronda Rousey is unlikable. That's just the truth. And she's unlikable because she's not a normal person. When you have these people who are athletes who come from outside of wrestling and wrestling to them is a second job after their real career is over. Roman Reigns is another one. If it wasn't a guy, he said it himself. Hey, if it wasn't for my ankle injury, I probably wouldn't even be here. Goldberg is another one. He wanted to play football. Ultimate Warrior wanted to be a bodybuilder. Sting wanted to be a bodybuilder. He's the only one really that people actually like that came from the outside who actually says, oh, I wasn't really a wrestling fan. But hey, you know, I'm in the business now. You know, Lex Luger, how many of them have we, do, we, do I need to name? A lot of these folks, you know, came from some other industry. Brock Lesnar, number one with a bullet. You know, him and Sid Vicious are number ones with a bullet when it comes to this kind of thing. It's, it's these guys don't warm up to wrestling fans. You know, they, they're, they consider it an athletic endeavor. They're looking at it in some ways like a competition. They want it to be somewhat realistic. Brock doesn't want to have a 25 minute match with Kofi Kingston. He doesn't, that doesn't make sense to him. It doesn't make sense to me, you know? So, you know, when you have that kind of thing going on and there's all of this other politics going on, we're the cutthroat nature of the women's division. And now she's got to go back into that. It is going to be a lot of that rubbing off on her. And she is going to struggle with making that work. And I, to me, the advice should be let Rhonda be Rhonda. Stop trying to force Rhonda to be a baby face. She's not a baby face. She's a heel. Let Rhonda be a heel. They booked themselves into a corner by booking her with Charlotte. That was a mistake because Charlotte is another entitled heel. You got two entitled heels. One of them trying to work baby face. That's not going to work. There's no pure baby face in that match. Um, the Becky match probably would have been better, but they did the thing with Bianca Belair. Now they have to pay that off. Hopefully they, they, they'll actually pay that off at WrestleMania and have Bianca beat Becky. And then you had Charlotte beat everybody on the fucking planet two or three times over and embarrass and humiliate half their fucking roster. Hell, more than half, more than 90% of the roster to the point where the only people who can believably beat her are Ronda Rousey and Sasha Banks. And Sasha Banks is hurt. So now you're stuck with Ronda. And so somebody's got to be the baby face. So (laughs) in that instance, you're asking people to make a tough choice. Are you going to choose Charlotte? entitled asshole diva who if she doesn't want to sell is not going to or entitled asshole diva ronda rousey who's gonna you know say bullshit to you on the internet and generally carry herself like her shit don't stink and you know make cheap shots at you over the internet (laughs) you're not gonna win this a lose lose situation for wwe but they did it to themselves but it took me a while to really sit back and think about it. Because I was like, man, Ronda Rousey, this, it's always a tough go with her. And it's been tough for a while. And I've been seeing all of these uh, articles pop up about what Ronda Rousey should do and what WWE should do with Ronda Rousey. And, you know, she can't handle this. And I'm like, no, she, it's not a problem that she can't handle it. The problem is that she is handcuffed and she can't really respond. Because she has to try to play the baby face. They need to put her in a room with John Cena for like an hour. And let Cena coach her through how to be a baby face even when everybody hates you. And maybe he can actually fix her first fucking personality. Uh, to me, I don't think it's possible. I think Ronda Rousey is just who she is at this point. You know? It just is who she is. But I can tell you that she is this way because, and it's the same as everybody who has a similar background to her. She's not a fucking nerd. She's not a fucking dork. She is not, you know, in the club of, uh, this was my dream. She's not in that club. And because she's not in that club, she does not, she does not know how to relate to those people. And therefore she's not really going to get over as a baby face. Now, they're going to do something smart and pair her up with Naomi and have her save Naomi. They had her do that stuff on SmackDown. 
they're going to have to keep Naomi around for a while. <laughs> keep some baby face around for a while so that Ronda can at least go into that match with, with a good baby face pop because sweetening the crowd and all this kind of stuff is not going to work forever. I think that right after she beat Charlotte, she needs to just turn heel. That would be my opinion. Take Charlotte off TV for a while. Let Ronda be the top heel. And I mean it. Let her turn heel on the audience. And, you know, talk about similar to Sasha, not similar to Becky. You know, she's taking time away from her family to be out here with these people and they don't appreciate it. You know, let her say all of her little snide remarks. And people, she could be speaking directly from the heart, but at the same time, people will think it's part of the show. That's the best option you got. Because if you want, if you're going to go with Ronda Rousey as massive baby face again, like you did on Raw, that shit ain't going to work. That shit going to flop hard. You know, go ahead and turn her heel. And I think that's the best option we got here. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Like, share, and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys later.